93% of U.S. adults are metabolically unhealthy, and the single best solution to reverse that problem is the carnivore diet, meat. If you don't know what metabolic health means, you will by the end of this video, but you have probably already heard of type 2 diabetes, which is an example of metabolic disease. Before I go further, let's talk about what metabolic health is. The word metabolism is thrown around a lot, usually in the context of weight loss. You hear people say things like, she's skinny because she has a fast metabolism. But this doesn't reflect the breadth of what metabolism is. Metabolism is all of the chemical processes in your body that you need to stay alive. Things like building and repairing body tissues, energy production, synthesizing compounds that your cells need to function. If you are metabolically healthy, that means all of these processes are running smoothly and there is an absence of metabolic disease or metabolic syndromes. The poster child for metabolic disease is type 2 diabetes. 52% of the U.S. population is estimated to have diabetes or prediabetes, which is a disease where you lose the normal ability to control your blood glucose. At any given time, there's only about one teaspoon of sugar or glucose in your bloodstream. When you eat sugar or carbs, this triggers an insulin response from your body. Insulin is a hormone that drives the movement of sugar out of your blood and into your cells. This is really important because excess sugar in your bloodstream is toxic. So your body must tightly control your blood sugar levels in order to stay alive. After a meal, it's really important to get excess sugar out of your blood and moved somewhere else. On the standard American diet, you eat a lot of carbs. When you go and eat 150 grams of carbs in a meal, which is a really easy thing to do, this is a big stress to your body. And when you put this stress on your body too many times, the beta cells and the pancreas, which get insulin into the blood, become worn out and your tissues become less responsive to insulin. This is the loss of insulin sensitivity and you become insulin resistant. And typically type two diabetics have to start injecting themselves with larger and larger amounts of insulin when the system has broken down. Insulin resistance is obviously very associated with type two diabetes and metabolic syndrome, but also with high blood pressure, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, obesity, and more. And the only food that causes a dramatic insulin response is carbs. Protein and fat have a very small insulin response, but nothing that's unreasonable for the body. And it's nothing compared to something like a piece of cake. What's quite possibly an even more shocking statistic than the fact that 52% of people are diabetic or pre-diabetic is that 93% of people in the US are metabolically unhealthy. The majority of people in the U.S. have some sort of metabolic dysfunction, and what we're eating plays a huge role in this. One of the studies I've linked to in the show notes is titled Dietary Carbohydrate Restriction Improves Metabolic Syndrome Independent of Weight Loss. And what's really noteworthy about this study is that there were already a lot of studies that show that low carb diets improve numerous metabolic syndrome markers, but those diets were also associated with weight loss. So it was a little bit unclear about what role weight loss played. But in this study, they kept protein levels fixed and total calorie content high enough that it wouldn't lead to changes in weight. And the results of this study suggest that a low carb diet improves metabolic syndrome even without any change in weight. Weight gain is very tied in with metabolic dysfunction, but the main issue seems to be carbs themselves. And this makes sense in light of the fact that there are people who don't meet the requirements for metabolic health and aren't overweight. So let's define what actually qualifies you for being metabolically unhealthy. The American Heart Association says, metabolic syndrome is a group of risk factors that raises risk of heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and other health problems. It is diagnosed when any three of the following five risk factors are present, high blood glucose or sugar, low levels of HDL, good cholesterol in the blood, 
high levels of triglycerides in the blood, large waist circumference or apple-shaped body, and high blood pressure. Okay, so what exactly is the problem with carbs? Can we definitively say that they are bad? There are many doctors in the nutritional arena who say that people should not eat carbs at all, that they are not a species appropriate food. I actually don't feel comfortable concluding that carbs are bad for everyone as a blanket statement. This seems somewhat controversial to me still. Where I stand with this is that with the role that carbs play in metabolic dysfunction and the fact that most people are metabolically dysfunctional, they probably aren't a good idea for most people. Personally, I get really bad acid reflux from carbs and they are particularly harmful for me because of my PCOS. Metabolic dysfunction is thought to be one of the major underlying factors for so many diseases, including type 2 diabetes, but it also majorly increases your risk of heart attacks, strokes, dementia-related diseases like Alzheimer's, which some people call type 3 diabetes, and hypertension. Circling this back to carnivore, a lot of metabolic health is about limiting, overloading our blood with sugar and spiking our insulin via carb consumption. And we've learned from previous episodes that one of the problems with a plant-based diet is it's very difficult to get adequate amounts of digestible proteins and nutrients without also eating a lot of carbs. And that has an impact on your metabolic health. In my episode where I asked, can you get the nutrients you need on a carnivore diet? I read an excerpt from the book, Sacred Cow, about protein digestibility, how to get the same amount of protein in a four ounce steak, which has zero carbs. You'd need to eat 12 ounces of kidney beans plus a cup of rice, which has 122 grams of carbs. That's a ton of carbs. You can't be on a low carb diet eating that many carbs. Some people on a plant-based diet will add things like pea protein or soy protein to their diets, but the Clean Label Project did independent testing on 134 protein powders and found that 75% of plant-based protein powders had measurable levels of lead. Many of them also contained mercury, arsenic, and cadmium. So this brings in other issues. Meat kills two birds with one stone. You get the most nutrient-dense food while also limiting carbohydrates. It seems to me that if you are eating a lot of plants, you either risk malnourishment or having to eat a lot of carbs, which has a big impact on metabolic health. One of the best things about a way of eating like carnivore is that when you eat very low amounts of carbs consistently, you eventually become fat adapted. This is a great marker of metabolic health. And if you've never heard of this concept before, being fat adapted is the natural state that humans lived in for the majority of our history. It's sometimes referred to as metabolic flexibility, and it's the metabolic state of fueling your body with fat. It can be fat from your body or fat that you eat. Most people eating a standard American diet with a lot of carbs are not fat adapted. On this kind of diet, you are considered a sugar burner. Remember that sugar is referring to carbs, not just actual sugar. If you've ever heard someone say that toast is basically just sugar or that it turns into sugar, that's the idea. One of the problems with being a sugar burner, totally aside from all the health stuff, is that you have to eat all the time in order to keep your energy up. I know people who, if they don't eat every two or three hours, they get horrible headaches and become ravenously hungry. The term hangry, when you are hungry and angry at the same time, that is the defining feature of being a sugar burner. You are hungry all the time. You eat breakfast at eight and you can't make it to lunch at noon without a mid-morning crash at 10. Because when you are used to eating a lot of carbs, your body can't easily use your fat stores for energy. What's kind of wild to think about is that there's no reason that a human shouldn't be able to go a few days without eating. We had this metabolic flexibility for most of our history as humans, and we had to. Not eating for a couple days, that was not weird or uncommon. What's weird is needing to eat breakfast when you just ate 12 hours ago and all you've done since then is sleep. But a lot of people absolutely have to eat breakfast in order to function. This is something you can change by doing a carnivore diet or any low carb or ketogenic diet. 
when you become fat adapted and metabolically flexible, you're not ravenously hungry multiple times a day because you have the ability to tap into the fat on your body. One of the most common things people say when they switch to a ketogenic diet is that their blood sugar and energy are more even and they don't get hungry or have the same crashes throughout the day. It becomes very easy to fast and skip meals if that's something you want to do. If you want to minimize risk of major diseases like diabetes, heart attack, stroke, and Alzheimer's, then you need to maintain metabolic health. And a big piece of that is limiting carb intake. The best way to do this and maximize nutrient density and limit plant toxins is with a carnivore diet. Meat is truly the best food. Subscribe to my channel to keep getting more episodes supporting the carnivore diet. And if you want to hear from me in between episodes with more studies, bonus articles, and motivation for staying on the carnivore diet, sign up for my email newsletter at www.theroadtocarnivore.com.